to Special Collections. My name is Karen Backhouse. I am the Special Collections Librarian here at Liverpool Hope University. Special Collections is home to some 2,000 rare books and manuscripts, dating from as early as the 13th century, some highly illuminated and ornately decorated. Liverpool Hope are the custodians of these wonderful collections and as such have a duty of care to look after them for future generations. This video aims to alleviate any anxieties you may have about handling such rare books and give you the confidence to use them safely and help preserve them for the students who follow on from you. Before we begin, um, always remove your lanyard, your student ID, and any jewellery, anything uh, that might dangle as you lean over the books. Um, also any um, wafting sleeves, anything that may catch uh, and tear and cause damage. Also remove uh, scarves, any outdoor clothing to prevent contamination um, from uh, the weather, rain, dirt uh, and anything else. You may have seen presenters on the telly wearing those uh, white cotton gloves or these surgical gloves that we have here um, when handling rare books. Um, and really that's just for the screen, just to let the audience know that they're, they're rare books. Wearing gloves is just not ideal. Uh, when you wear gloves, you lose the sensitivity of your own touch, uh, thereby messages are not relayed from your fingertips to your brain, enabling you to judge just how fragile an object is uh, or how much pressure you need to be able to turn pages. Um, let me put some of these on. Everybody has uh, natural acids on their hands, um, um, that's normal, um, and this over time can do damage to the books, hence this is why um, people started wearing gloves. However, studies have shown that more damage is done in wearing gloves, trying to turn pages, than there is in the, from the natural acids in your hands. There's two exceptions to the glove rule, um, and that is if the item itself, and I have one here, um, has um, red rot, something that they call red rot. Um, when the binding starts to deteriorate over time, often cheap binding, it produces this orange powder, um, like so, and uh, this is called red rot. And this, you get covered in it, your hands get covered in it. So the, the best practice is to wear gloves, to handle it, to put it into into position, um, open it up and then remove your gloves um, so that you don't contaminate the relatively clean pages inside. The second exception to the rule is if you're wearing nail varnish or lacquer, um, the older stuff that you, uh, you apply yourself, that can mark on pages so that we ask um, if you come, if you remove it the night before. It's not the, cell, the same as the gel or the acrylic stuff that you get, the shellac. That tends to peel and that's okay. Um, but if you come with the other type, you'd have to wear gloves. Um, but again, we'd much prefer you um, to remove it before you come to a session in special collections. Uh, and then you're uh, free to use your own hands. When you come, avoid touching your face uh, uh, and fiddling with your hair and avoid touching the book as much as possible. So even though we have asked you to clean your hands, you don't want to contaminate. Uh, and also the natural acids will do damage over time. So the idea is to avoid touching the books as much as possible. And that leads us nicely on to um, supporting the books so that you don't have to touch them. Uh, and in doing so, you'll be using um, these um, cushions and something called lead weights, these snake weights. The greatest stress is on the book when in use is on the spine and also on the joint of the book. This is where the front board and back board um, are joined to the spine. Um, as you open it, as you can see there, um, there's a lot of um, pressure on the spine there, which really you want to support uh, with a cushion. Uh, and if not, what can happen, and this book has um, had to have been tied together uh, with archival, archival tape, um, is that uh, they can end up uh, in twain. 
quite simple as that. Um, also, damages to uh, the spine over time can mean that the uh, covers completely um, come off. And here we have the front board and the back board uh, completely removed. And again, they end up needing tying together to keep them together. And often you'll see some old books where the front board is missing. Um, I also have a stack of just front boards and back boards. This is why it is so important that the book is properly supported to prevent further deterioration. Never lay the book open flat on the table. There should always be a minimum of 60 degrees to the table on both sides to alleviate the pressure on that spine. Some books have been uh, rebound. Um, so here we have uh, a fairly modern binding um, for the uh, Greek New Testament dating from 1633. Um, this has been rebound and in doing that it's, it feels tight and you get to feel that when you're holding it, when you've got it in your hand. So it, it doesn't like to open much more than that. Um, because of that you can manipulate the incline on a cushion to suit um, how far open the book will um, happily sit um, and be supported. We ask that you come uh, with clean dry hands in order to avoid wearing gloves uh, but in saying that it's very important that you avoid touching the books as much as possible uh, and to help with that we have these um, leaded weights uh, called snake weights that can be used to hold open pages so that you don't have to physically hold them open with your hands uh, and thereby avoiding touching as much as possible. We have uh, snake weights of uh, varying weights um, and lengths to suit um, the pressure needed to hold open pages and also the size of the volume. Um, so for this we just need something quite delicate. Um, often it's just enough to catch the corners of the pages like so, um, sometimes requiring um, on the other side as well. Um, in this instance, it's not required at all, but uh, this is just for demonstration purposes. Um, other times, um, certainly with some of the larger folios, you may need to um, put it down the length of the margin to, to really hold open. Here we have a beautiful 15th century book of hours handwritten on um, parchment, beautifully uh, illuminated and decorated uh, with lots of precious minerals. I don't know if you can see the gold shining there in the light. I'm going to place the snake weights uh, on the corner just to hold open the page. That's all that's required. Sometimes um, when a uh, volume has been um, rebound, um, which this has in, uh, 18, in the 18th century, um, it's often cut and as you can see there's not a lot of margin space left that isn't beautifully um, covered in this decoration. Um, you want to avoid um, placing the snake weight if, if possible on that, um, so I'll just catch the corner uh, down at the bottom here. If it's unavoidable, just make sure that you place it uh, gently on the top and avoid um, moving across the surface. Um, the ink um, on parchment tends to sit on the surface, unlike um, with paper where it's absorbed. Um, so this is particularly delicate um, and can easily be um, damaged. When you're ready then to move on to uh, the next page, always remove the snake weight completely, um, like so. Turn your page and reinstate the snake weight. Like so. And there you have it. For your larger volumes, your folio editions, you're going to need decidedly larger cushions. The principle is the same when handling the larger folios. We open up the 
this book here, we've got Samuel Johnson's Dictionary, first edition, volume two, dated 1755. I'm just going to place the snake weight to hold open so I can study the title page here. One on the bottom corner. Um, and off I go. Then um, to move uh, through the book, um, look at something else. I remove the snake weights and keep on going, looking up words, likelihood, manacles, mischance. There we go. Do not be tempted to turn straight to the back of the book in one go. Um, that will cause too much abrasion um, against the cushion uh, for the, um, the spine, uh, which may be in varying um, degrees of um, damage. Okay, so what you would do is just incrementally um, work your way through it's always a good idea, dear, as you're as you're reading, um, using the folio, just to take a step back and um, readjust and make sure that that book is still in the best position to be supported. And as you go through to the end, like so, you get to the back. And there's no need for snake weights here, but uh, if there was, then you would reapply because uh, I want to be um, spending some time looking at this page. When working at home, you'll be used to um, making yourself comfortable and bringing the book to you uh, to look at. However, in the reading room, when working with special collections, it's the other way round. You have to make the book comfortable and well supported, and then often you have to manoeuvre yourself. Um, might mean you have to stand up to be able to look at that book properly. Use your common sense. Don't lean on the book when you're taking notes. Work to one side and always keep uh, your area tidy. Much of it is just common sense and you'll do fine. However, if at any time you're not sure about something, please do ask. I'm always here to help.